and the weak. So what is the difference? A meek person and a weak person. That was actually the line last one. Yes, ma'am. Weakness when you don't show restraint. But in line with what we saw the last Sunday, we want to what someone to tell us. So you have answered this. Another person, please. Yes? Okay, you can you uh, who else? Who was here last Sunday? Let me see those that were here last Sunday. <laughs> okay, sister we say this. Oh, you say what the difference between the weak and the meek. In terms of capacity. I'll use the word, they're able to show mercy to other people. Yeah. Uh, their weakness is like. In terms of capacity. Yeah. Yes, mommy. Uh, I'll, say, I'll say that meekness is like strength under control yeah. or power under control. Um, and then um, weakness is inability to even to act. It. Okay. So for a meek person, you have the power, but you restrain yourself from acting. But the person that is weak, does not have the capacity at all. Amen. 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 Thank you. So we'll go to today's lesson. The lesson today is actually the the, 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 the attitude, the continuation of what we studied last Sunday. We have eight of them. And we have the first, the second. Last Sunday we did the third and the fourth. For today we'll be, we'll be doing the fifth and the sixth. The fifth one is blessed and the merciful. For they shall obtain mercy. Then the sixth one is blessed and the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Two key, two powerful attributes of a child of God. And there are blessings, and there are blessings if we actually uh, invite them and we do as they are actually expected of us, according to Jesus' injunction and instruction. So for our Bible passage today, I'm going to look at the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 7 to 8. That is where the Beatitudes are. If you, if you if you take your time, you can read the whole of the book of Matthew chapter 5. You will see everything there. Chapter 5, verse 7 to 8. I want us to open our Bible there. So I'll read from this place. Matthew chapter 5. Before it will be projected, let's, let's continue. Matthew chapter 5, verse 7 to 8. It says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Then blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You want to gain mercy, show mercy. You want to see God, your heart must be pure. So that is just like. A, song, a, a, a paraphrase, a, a summary of it. So the memory verse is from the book of Psalm 1825. Someone should read for us. Psalm 18, verse 25. Are we there? This is from the school. We have to participate. We have to keep our Bible. We have to uh, act when you are asked to. 18. Who is there? Someone should read for us. With the merciful. Yes, sir. Thou would show thyself merciful. Okay. With an upright man, thou would show thyself upright. So that is who is talking there. That is David talking about God there. With the merciful, thou will show thyself merciful. With an upright man, thou will show thyself upright. Shall we say it together? I want to go. With the With merciful, the thou will show thyself merciful. With an upright man, that will show that self upright. With an upright, upright word. Man. 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 Okay. Who can say it without looking at the Bible? I think it's very simple. Yes, sir. With thy merciful, that will show thyself merciful. Yes, sir. With an upright man, that will show thyself upright. Great. Another person. Mommy, I Merciful, that we should I saw merciful. Yes. With an upright man, that we should I saw upright. Great. 
So we go to the lesson as that we have two major lines here. The first one is the blessed are the merciful. Then the second part is the blessed are the pure in heart. So the, the lesson today is more of a question and answer. So you answer, I will, I will throw the answer and question to us, or we answer them and we conclude by discussing. So the first question, who are the what are who are who are the merciful and what are their attributes? Who is the merciful person? Uh, you can use the, you can use illustration, you can use example, you can call persons by the name. Who are the merciful and what are their attributes? My brother of Los Angeles. Hello, sir. Bro, Chike. Bro, who are the merciful? No, today's so, not last week's so. So you are a merciful person in your own way. Who is a merciful person? A merciful person in my own way is um, it's someone who shows a uh, concern about um, people's plight. Great. Yeah. Nice. Can you, can you still say more? Merciful. Um, okay. Great. Let's clap for him. Who else? Who are the merciful? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, um, someone who is merciful, a merciful person is someone who is, um, shows compassion. And when they are in a position to take the decision that will cause the person, you just uh, overlook it. Okay. Act of merciful. Yes, a merciful person is someone who is led by the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. uh, there was an incident I, back home where I give somebody money to get me prepared later. Gave him money for the time he was spending. Yeah, it's the meter, the money for the meter, and uh, there was no meter. Mm -hmm. I was coming from Abuja that day. I was furious. I had, I, would, I was, I had made up my mind. I would use the force of my power, get police, and deal with him, show him a lesson. And the spirit of God just spoke to me, let it go. You know, for me, when I got home, I, I just allowed it, you know, to, to pass away. And. Uh, that was when I, I heard in my spirit that mercy is actually when, when you are justified to take action and you are able to, you know, inspired by the Spirit of God to allow things to go. That's mercy. Amen. So, who else? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Um, from the Bible perspective, we could look at David when he was running away from Saul. He had an opportunity to hurt Saul when he walked into his camp. Saul was fantastic. But instead of taking advantage of the situation, he remembered the anointing of Saul's life. Even though he, he, God had departed from Saul at that time, he still remembered that he was anointed to be king. And he didn't take the decision. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, Psalm 143, verse 8, maybe to 11 or 10. It says, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquity. You know, that's, that's what shows how merciful. Yes. So, nice. the merciful from all our said, merciful. even the one of David, the, even the, I only mentioned when he had, a, 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 when he, he had an encounter with Saul. <laughs> Even, even, not even so. Last Sunday we had uh, when we had a counter with some of all these uh, bad albums, some town boys, let me call it. And he had the opportunity to even strike them. He just left them. So a merciful person, somebody that you are, you are in position to, you, are, you, you see people in situations and you, you consider their plight. You step in their, in their situation. We empathize with them. This is a merciful person. They show compassion. They show uh, kindness. They show all form of leniency. So, from the dictionary, there are so many synonyms for the word merciful that are uh, actually check mercy. The word mercy, full is actually from the word mercy. We hear of leniency, we hear of clemency, we, we hear of charity, we hear of grace, we hear of forgiveness, for, 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 we hear of, uh, of compassion, what is an act of? Mercy, being merciful. So, 
To be merciful to means to show forgiveness and compassion to anyone who causes us harm, subject to one's part, generally to those in need. It may be those that are in need. It may be those that have offended or that are supposed to be punished or decide to overlook them. That is the act of mercy. All of that the Bible is here, God showing mercy to the children of Israel. He has brought them from different situations. But over the time, you see them, they're still going back, the same vicious echo of sinning, coming back, sinning, coming back. And that is how God was showing them mercy. The Bible says, even as a father will pity his children. At times, you will see your, your child becoming a uh, recasper, we have the prodigal son. The father still showed him mercy after he had wasted. He has, he, he has tainted the image of the family and all those stuff. And the father has been brought him to the, to the food. Amen. Amen. I'm going to be looking at some Bible scriptures about uh, what, uh, the, the act of merciful and those that show mercy. We're going to be looking at the first one, Luke chapter 10, verse 30 to 35. I will not share the Bible passages. When you read your own, you tell us the, the point there. Luke chapter 10, verse 30. To 35, but Chike. Then Matthew chapter 18, 22 to 25. On the uh, bro, uh, mommy, and then Matthew chapter 10, uh, 18, 22 to 25. Then we have uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. And start Matthew. Yeah, I don't know. Ufuma, yes. You read uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. So let's read those Bible passages. The first one, Luke chapter 10, 30 to 35. Yes. Yes. No, Luke. Luke chapter 10, 30 to 35. Luke chapter 20. Luke chapter 10, 30 to 35. Okay. Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him, they stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, the priest came along, but when he saw the man lying dead, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. The temple assistant walked over and looked at him, lying dead, for he also passed by on the other side. Then he despite then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan suited his wounds with oil oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. 35. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, so, out of the three persons that had a counter with the wounded man, who is the one that showed mercy there? The third person. And the Bible said the third one was a, 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 a Samaritan, an unbeliever. The other ones, the Levites, the priests, they showed it. Not, so, it doesn't mean the person must be a, 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 a child of God as it were. For the other must be a, a minister as it were, or be a pastor as it were, for you to show mercy. So, that was, Jesus called that man the good Samaritan. So, that one showed mercy to the man that was in situation, that was helpless, that was in pain. Amen. Amen. Matthew 18, 23 to, 25, 23 to 27. Showed him pity. That, that 
go into the world pity them. Amen. Then what is Jesus' uh, position on the act of showing mercy on this street? Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. What is that? What is Jesus saying there? Forgiveness. Jesus keep on repeating it. Forgive your debtor. Forgive those that offend you. Even when you call this, those that despite fully use you. Amen. Amen. So that is the act of mercy. We will see it continue. So the second part of it is that why are the merciful blessed? Those that are being merciful, why are they called blessed? Why are they blessed? That is the second part. I want, we want to I will start by answering the question that why are they blessed? Who can tell us? He said, blessed, blessed are the mercy for they shall, for they shall, be, for they shall obtain mercy. Why are they called blessed according to the scriptures? Why are they called blessed? I, I, I would say that an act of being merciful is an act of, being, is an act of honor to God. Okay. Because you Sometimes, you know, sometimes being in the practical scene of this showing mercy can be difficult sometimes. You know, but like our brother said there, when the Holy Spirit of God ministers to you and you decide there to respond in obedience, mm -hmm. because actually you have your you have the option of still going through with your actions, but you decided to honor the Lord mm -hmm. by responding in obedience to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And God counts it. Uh, uh, as as okay, yes, sir. Yeah, uh, yes, I would agree with what she said. Um, whenever we show mercy, we transcend send to the divine. Mm. So if you leave the physical, you are, you are, you are now communing with, you know, with God. Mm. Yes, and um, it comes with blessing. The story I shared, within a few weeks, I was put on, a, I was placed among those to attend the training abroad. And mm. I would be amount that was given to me was 10 times what I lost to that guy. Okay. So Amen. blessing comes with it. Come with it. During our study yesterday, one of the teachers mentioned that anytime she wants to get a blessing from God, she show mercy. If you want to show, if you want to get mercy, what do you do? She show mercy. You are showing. So by showing mercy, it means that you are, you are indirectly you are taking the, the place of the divinity of God. God sees you in his position. You are in a position to actually pass judgment. But you take that mercy with judgment and they do it in the law court. People will say, please take that mercy with judgment. But uh, in the spirit, in our mind, I say, according to your power. But there are, there are times you may see some things we cannot do it, but we have the Holy Spirit that is our name that, that we help us to do it. It may be very painful. During one of our studies, somebody said that uh, forgiveness means the offense has committed the offense. The offense is actually there. It's so obvious that the offense is there. But you decided to do what? To overlook. That is an act of mercy. The, 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 the merciful are blessed. We have some kind of point there. Every day of our life, we see God showing us mercy. We see God loading us with his benefit. We see God helping us out. We see God intervening in our situation. Psalm 86, verse 15. Someone should read that one for us. Psalm 86, verse 15. Another person, Psalm 68, verse 19. Then uh, Mark 2, 5, 44 to 45. I think I will share the scriptures. I don't know. Sister, we say the Mark 2, 5, 44 to 45. Then uh, sister, brother Kike, Psalm 68, verse 19. Then uh, who else? Uh, Psalm 100, Psalm 100, verse 5. Uh, Start back on on uh, pink cloth. Can you read those questions and tell us why are they the merciful blessed? Why are they blessed? Let's start from Psalm 100 verse 5. Psalm 100 verse 5. Please read for us. Then another person, uh, Psalm 68 verse 9. I think that one to someone. Please you just read your own. Read your own. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 19. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise God our Savior. For each day he carries us in his arms. Carry us in his arms. You know, that's that translation. 100 verse 5? No, 68 verse 19. He carries us in his hands. Grace. Blessed be the Lord who daily, who daily loaded us with benefit. 
benefits. Amen. All this, the miracle of sleeping and waking up. You don't know it. When, when you are sleeping, like you are you are partially dead, only that your heart is beating. You woke up this morning, it is God. Some people woke up some people woke up this morning and they found themselves in some places. But God made you to wake up and He gave you bread. He gave you all the blessings of this life. He made your business to prosper. He has not removed sanity from you. He, he, that is, he, he, on a daily basis, he made you to be able to be, uh, take actions of your life. All the plans, all the steps you have you, you, you planned before that particular day, you find yourself doing them. It is because of his mercy. Another person is Psalm 100, verse 5. So, what is that place there? Generation to generation, God is being faithful. From one hour to another hour, God shows us mercy. The mercy of God, they are all encompassing, all, all, all aspects of our life. So, our family life, our career life, our health, everything. It means that the, the, the those that are showing mercy, mercy, they have attained a position of, oh, this is God, and you are now becoming a replica of what God actually wants to, to fill this earth. He is present, he is, he is himself. To, uh, 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 coming and uh, showing forth through you. Matthew 5, 44 to 45. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, but I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Mm -hmm. 45. That ye may be the children of your Father, which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on, on the just and on the unjust. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Exactly what our brother said. You are, by being merciful, you have attained the, the level of divinity. You have now transcended from being a normal man, an immortal man, to take the place of a, of a, of a mortal man to place of immortal. You show mercy. You are in a position to take life, but you say, I don't want to take their life. And you decide to show mercy. And you just consider them and you leave them like that. The Bible said that he, he, that he, said he showed that he said, uh, God com com uh, commended his love towards us. Who are we yes in that? He sent his son to die for us. He has made provision for mercy, he has made provision for, for, kind, for, for, for forgiveness even before we, we, we came to saving grace of his son. We are blessed if we are merciful because mercy is something God himself displays. Then the merciful is displayed because he shall obtain mercy. When they when they let me look at the part. Say when the most need it and most desire Psalm 44, 46 verse 1 to 5. Because you are blessed, you have it. because you are merciful, you just get things coming to you like that because you, you show out of mercy, God will just show you love, we just consider you, even the things that you don't even generate, God will just show them, just give them to you like that because you are mercy. So if you want to receive mercy, show mercy to another person. Amen. Amen. If you want to get mercy, show mercy. If you want to get grace, show grace. If you want to get compassion, show compassion to that person. That person that desperately needs your help. There are tiny people that we are showing mercy to, they are helpless. Some of them, it may seem as if they are trying to use us. They are using us for their selfish gain. But just for the sake of God, for the sake of love, consider that thing. Amen. Amen. I have a question here. I think believers should discuss why, I think the class should discuss why believers should be merciful. I just want one answer. Why should we be merciful? Why? People that are using us, they are, they are, they are just treating us like that. Right? And you know that in your, in your face, you know that this person is deliberately using you, but they are still showing you mercy. Why should we become mercy? Some people have not talked before. Some people have not talked before. There's mommy, mommy at the front. Why should believers be merciful? Why should we show mercy to others? You have they show yes ma'am, they need to come back. I say if you show mercy you will be blessed. And as a child of God, you should show mercy to us in the Amen. So the blessing aspect of it is very important. And uh, again, you are the Jesus, 
the sea here. If you can exhibit an act of mercy, they know that your God is merciful. They see you as Jesus, so we should show likewise. Amen. Amen. Who else? Why should believers be merciful? Why should we be merciful? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. So, yes, I, I just have a question, but yeah. I would also contribute that because our Heavenly Father is also a merciful God. Mm -hmm. He shows us mercy every day, every second. So we should also show mercy to others so that we in turn can also receive mercy. But my question is almost like a question, but sometimes we can be also vulnerable from people maybe people of authority and they use their power to like oppress you and you see that these people are being unjust and sometimes we can also fret because it can cause a lot of things you know negative um, vices for us and we begin to worry for example if like a boss is trying to like oppress the subordinate and as a result it's threatening you of you losing your job so sometimes you can begin to have grudges, you know, hold grudges in your heart. But in, t in turn, I think it's also important that we also forgive those people that are hurting us. But we know that even if we lose our jobs in the process, we should not hold that grudge because God can also, you know, be, it can also, you know, he can also be angry with us as children of God for us not forgiving those people that hurt us. Amen. So it's important for us to do that as well. So, just like uh, Stephen, even in the act when they were stoning him, he was praying for them. How terrible that one is. You are dying. And you are still asking God, forgive the Lord. So, yesterday, uh, uh, one of the teachers asked to one extent, if you wish you mercy, it will open to one extent. Let me just to one extent. Can we continue to, to, to sing? To, and you are going to to just Make sure you mess you all the time. To what extent shall we? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, it's almost the same thing I wanted to ask. Where is the place of judgment now? Where is the place of judgment in life? Okay. The question now uh, is not to it. Where is the place of judgment? Where is the boundary? Let's guess what you do. Yeah, um, the place of judgment, we, it is not in our hands to place judgment. And why it's, it's like it's very important, or it's a, it's a matter of necessity that we show mercy because it's an act of obedience. God actually gave that direct instruction love your neighbor as yourself. And when you're showing mercy, you are actually, actually showing love. It's an act of obedience. So, whatever it is that has to do with judgment should totally be next to God. Thank you. Yeah. I think in the affairs of the states, yeah. say, <laughs> say you are a judge. You cannot show mercy. Yeah. It is your job. Yes, if you are a policeman. Well, you can take that mercy with judgment. You can, you can take that judgment with mercy. Sorry. Yeah, you can, if you are a policeman, yes. there is a criminal. Yes. It's, mm -hmm. it's your job. Or you are in the war, you are a soldier. <laughs> yeah. So in the affairs of the state, if you commit a crime, the state may not show you mercy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and they to, to wish the mercy to the level they wish to show you mercy. Not that they will not show you mercy at all. <laughs> that is why people go to court. Instead of giving them like 20 years imprisonment, they will go to a higher court and they will decide to reduce it yes. for them. Yes. So, yes. there is a boundary. So, I want to say something. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, I want to say something, but I'm just thinking in my mind, the right way to prove it. Um, there are two natures of God. We're talking as believers. Mm. I, I, I understand the state, the, the position of states is exactly as you put it. But as a believer, and in the context of what we're looking at today, there are two natures of God that is very important for us to understand. It's nature to make sure that justice is done. A second nature is his nature to love. And I read in one of the books I was reading during the week, and it just happened that it helped me to put that in proper perspective. God is not a man that he should lie. 
and he is just and he will make sure that justice is done over every matter. But he's also God of love and he will do everything possible to show us love, which is on the platform of mercy. And the, 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 the position of God on judgment is so great that it is the reason why not everybody, everybody as it were, enjoyed love from God, even though God has made available love. Now, in the position of Christ, God fulfilled the judgment for sin by offering his son as a sacrifice. This is very important for us to understand. He fulfilled his judgment, his desire for judgment. There must be judgment because he said every soul that sins shall do what? Shall die. So in his, require, in, in his desire for judgment, he offered his son, Christ, to die for the payment, for the, for the payment of sin, which is the judgment. So that he then offered love to the world. That everyone who accepts that love from the death of his son passes from judgment to mercy and favor. So, God's nature running parry pursuit, and it's very deep. If we accept the offering of his son, then he waves his judgment for death, and we come into love through his son. The same with us as children of God. We need to understand that, yes, there is the drive, and there is the desire for judgment, but then there is also the stronger desire for love, which is the platform of mercy. We must always look at it from the perspective of God. Yeah. Any other person, I think that one is clear. No matter the, the depth of your sin, mercy overrules. Amen. And that is the work that Jesus actually came to do on that cross. So the second part of the lesson is blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall do what? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see what? See God. So we want to see God. God expects us to be pure in heart. What does it mean to be pure in heart? There are some uh, Greek words there they use in that place. Uh, pure or cataros, it means to be clean, to be blameless, and abstain from guilt. Then the other word is uh, cardia. This means it, 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 it refers to the heart, the physical heart. That one is talk about the, the, our heart, where our thoughts, our desires, our opinion, everything comes from. So, Based on that, what are we looking at the heart of man? To be pure in heart, what does that mean? When you say a man is pure in heart, we have other words that you can use to describe it. What does it mean for a man to be pure in heart? Since you can use synonyms, you can use example, you can use description. Yes, class. What does it mean to be pure in heart? For me, I would say, yes, sir. even your motives yeah. behind what you do, is uh, is inspired by the spirit of God. Yes. So when you do actions, do uh, stop. If we strip everything out in the yes. closet of the closet, yes. you are you actually uh, you're serving God genuinely. So what does it mean to be pure in heart now? To be inspired by the spirit of God. To be inspired by the spirit of God. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In the context of um, dealing with your fellow human beings, yes. when you deal with people without any form of um, mind games, yeah. that's um, it shows your actions. When your motives yeah. are pure, yeah. yes. And which other person to be pure in heart? Is it difficult like that? You can use you can use other words. And what does it mean to be pure? I won't be David. To be blameless. Yeah, you mentioned it. Yeah, all these things, are they possible? <laughs> By God's standard, through Christ with the man. Amen. So to be pure in heart, to be pure in heart means that you are holy. Amen. Yes. You are, you are holy. Yeah. And you are, you are, you are, you are, you are holy. You, when you are holy, it means that when God looks down, what does he see? He sees purity. He sees genuity. You see a, 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 a heart that is actually totally given to Jesus. Not that there are ten steps in and two steps out. Everything for Jesus. You are you are righteous. You are you have a right standing with God. So to be pure in heart means to be blameless in who we are. Proverbs four twenty three. 
who are, who are, who are trying to be fast now. Proverbs 1, 23, somebody. The other person says Samuel 16, 7. The other person says Peter 2, 1. Please, can we read? If you are there, just read for us. Proverbs 4, 23. Yes, ma'am. Keep thy heart with all diligence. Out of it are the issues of life. Amen. Out of your heart come the issue of all your decisions. Because if your heart are not pure, the way you will play, you will enjoy. You will be joining out of sentiment, you will be biased, you will be you will be dubious, you will you will do so many things. But when you keep in diligence, your is focused on your state in God. You know that you are dealing according to God. Standard. First Samuel 16, 7. First Samuel 16, 7. God wants us to be pure here so that we can see God. We want to see God here. We want to see God in eternity. We our heart will be pure. First Samuel 16, 7. For Someone, the, please. For the Lord says to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at at the heart. Amen. That was the case of uh, the sons of Jesse being paraded before Samuel when we were, when we were trying to get the treatment of the soul. Amen. And Eliab was presented and to the first time that Eliab looked like it. But the God was telling Samuel that you don't look at it. So God judges the heart. Your motives, your intention. You want to get power, you want to get to a particular position. You want to take that office. Why why are you you want to get this master? You want to get this PhD. You want to get this husband. You want to get this wife. You want to go to this country. What is your intention? Amen. Are you trying to show? God sees the heart. The Bible said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall for they shall see God. Let's be that to one. So all those things that like she just spread. So all every form of guy, every form of hidden motive, all form of hidden agenda, God sees them and God frowns at them. So we want to live a pure life, we want to have a pure life. What are the things I must do? There are two things there. The first one is in Psalm 51 verse 10. Someone read for us. I want to have a pure heart. I desire I want to have a pure heart. 51 verse 10. So that is, you have to come to Jesus. He's the only one that can save you. He, he, he's the one that can take the heart of stone and give us the heart of flesh. And in John 17, verse 7, God is the one that will do it. You run to God. And God has made provision by the sacrifice of His Son. Amen. Amen. So on the daily basis, you ask. You go to the mirror of God and ask God, this one that is sitting there, how do I remove it? God will tell you, okay, do it. You go and tell you, okay, your shoulder, bring it a little bit down. Okay, your your waistline is so broad, trim it. All the things that God keeps on telling you on a daily basis, gradually, gradually, you are conforming. And you will see that you will you see God. Amen. Amen. You cannot see God when you are not pure in heart. So why are the pure in heart blessed? Just like the first one. Why are the pure in heart blessed? Well, Hebrew 12, 14. Another person should read uh, uh, John 14, 23, because of our time. Why are they blessed? My heart is pure. What, what do I gain? What, is my, what are my blessings? Who is reading for us? Yes, sir. Well, to be blessed is that the person will see God. Good. So you are seeing God in your dreams, in your affair, in every part. God is there. He is he, presently leading you, directing you. The power of the privilege. Amen. Amen. So the next one, to be pure in heart, the Lord will dwell in that place. So God is in you. You don't make mistakes. You don't make rash decisions. You don't speak uh, at will. You are being constrained. You act according to God's impulse. Amen. These are blessings. So God wants us to do these things. So the second uh, activity is that uh, class should discuss why the river must be pure in heart. Anybody that I've not talked before, why must believer be pure in heart? Why? I'm a believer. 
and if the expectation of God for me to be pure, why is God wanting me to be pure, to get a pure heart, pure purity, 100%? Yes, ma'am. You think? I think the. No, I don't want you to think. Why? Be sure. All right, okay. And let me use another frame of words. So, like, um, the reason why believers should be pure in their hearts is because it's true our hearts will commune with God. You know, the, the two, the Pharisee and the man that brought their offerings to the Lord, the Lord searched their heart and said, Go, drop your gift and go and, go and sort your heart out first, and then come back to me. So that's that's the channel through which we communicate with God. And when there is grievances for any reason, there's a bridge in communication. Amen. So our heart must be pure. We want to see God. We want God to come to us in our dreams. We want God we want to get revelations. We want to walk miracles. This particular two verses here, yeah, to be merciful and to, to be praying. Hard. You look for those that are miracle workers. That is their mission. They are compassionate, they are compassionate, they are merciful. Uh, they are, you see God you're working with them. God showed them. She, she, you, God shows up for them. God is with them. Amen. Amen. I want to the first part was that blessed are merciful for the house of mercy. You want to obtain mercy. Be merciful to those that are around us. At times the way we, we keep animals at times around us. We drank, we just like that, we just squash an animal like that. In very yeah, like this part, you can't kill an animal, you have to buy the processed one. So it shows how our heart is. We just we see a, a, a we all use one, one big stick and strike them. We should show them mercy too. Amen. <laughs> the same way we do to human beings, he, he has to die. Amen. For God is saying that he doesn't need to die, that judgment is in his hand. Amen. That we show mercy. So we will show mercy that we should people pray for them. It may be difficult, but God will help us. Amen. Amen. It's time for questions. I know one or two questions before we round up. Yes, Bobby. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, um, uh, from the scripture. Thank you, Pastor Paul. He's done justice to the lesson. Um, just to um, place a balance to what we're talking about. I think the first question about what is the extent of mercy? You know, sometimes when you bring examples, when you bring um, reality to situations, then you know that, you know, there are approaches to go. For example, I've got a two-year-old son, and he wants to take the cup of water. He likes to be independent. He wants to do things for himself. But he wants to take hot water now from the kettle and bring it to the lounge. I will not, as a parent, let him do that. And there's a tendency, if you have a child who likes to do things for themselves or they want to prove a point, the child might start crying, might actually start rolling on the floor, might actually be screaming, tantrums. throwing tantrums, neighbors to come in. And you know, somebody could be looking at you as a parent. Are you not merciful? Can't you see the way this boy is crying? Just let him be. At that point, are you going to trigger that mercy in quotes? It is also act of mercy to be able to put boundaries. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, while he was teaching, I just went to the dictionary, and the, the definition for merciful is bring relief from something that is unpleasant. So, the, when God says you should be merciful, does not mean everything goes. Does not mean no boundaries. So a child is going in the wrong direction. You know this thing is going to kill this child. But you are like out of mercy. I don't have the mind to see him cry. To see him suffer this way. Let me just give it to him. Then that is no more showing mercy. So we really need to understand the extent of um, wisdom. Many times we ask God for many things. God does not give us everything we ask for. Is there anyone? I, because... There are times I can ask God for something, he won't give it to me on the spot. And no wonder he said in Romans, now he said, I will show mercy unto whom I will show mercy. Because if God gives us everything, our wishful thinking, sometimes we are not ready for that thing. And because it's out of his love and mercy, he may not give it to us then, 
He knows that by next year we'll be ready. He will give it to us. Mm. So when God does not give it to us then, let's not be angry. Let's understand that it is actually out of his mercy and love. And, you know, at the due time it will come to pass. May God give us wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That was a nice moment. Any other person? Any other one? So we're going to stand up and pray. And talk to the, the Lord. And to give us the ability. Because there's a place of ability there. According to our 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 man I'm going to give it ability. So you're going to show mercy. It's not easy. You just be showing mercy. I think when we're doing our our yes, dimension of one of uh, our situation of a sibling that was always being wasteful. They will learn things for him, go to the go to the boarding school. The next day he has displaced everything one way or the other. But we still come back, my mom will still gather again and give. Like that, the person will keep on going. But after some time, he said, enough is enough. And that was that she went there and they met the school and they just did one or two things and from that day the person changed. But people have abused us, they have using us as a, a cash out uh, target or okay, for, 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 for cash out. And like they are using us, thank God to give us the grace, to give you the ability to be able to know when to say no, the power to do it, to say yes and to say no in terms in, 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 in acting in the place of the one that is in position to help. Are we praying? Then it, the, the other part is blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Do you want to get if you want to see God, your heart must be pure. You have to be pure in and out. You want to see God in heaven. That one is, is very important. A, a pure heart. A heart that is void of sin. A void of every form of accommodation. God will help us. Father, we bless your name this morning. We ask for the grace to be able to show mercy at all times. And for our heart to be guided by your word. Your name is glorified now. In Jesus' name we pray with thank you. Amen. Amen.
the Lord. Hallelujah. Generations after generation. Is your generation going to be praised in the name of the Lord? Yes. yes. Is your generation going to be praised in the name of the Lord? Yes. If you are a witness here, whose generation will be praised in the name of the Lord? Can you shout a powerful hallelujah? Hallelujah! So do we know that song? Yes. You don't want to leave it for the choir, do you? Yeah. So we all, I'm going to employ you to be on your feet. I will sing that song one more time with the choir. Generation after generation. Now this is very important. Because for you to be able to ask the Lord what is his name, it means you have a relationship with him. So if you are singing that song this morning, I want you to sing it with all boldness. As the Lord has called you sons and daughters, to say generations after generation, keep praising you, yet no word, no word, absolutely no word sums you up. There is not one word that can describe our gods. And then, the songwriter says, he took the confidence, the boldness, asked God, what name fits you? And the response was, he says, Yah. Yah, the hollow one. Yah, the holy one. Why can we sing for more time? Jesus. 
Lord, speak a word to our hearts this morning in the name of Jesus. A word to meet our situation in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, thank you very much. God bless you. Let's put our hands together for the fire. Hallelujah. Amen. I know it's uh, strange to find me here at this time and uh, part of the, the service. But as you can see, if you look around you, you'll find also that quite a number of your brethren are not in church this morning. And then, more particularly, the pastor is not in church this morning. And that explains why I'm standing here. Um, so, can I quickly explain that to us um, as we go on? There is a program that the Redeemed Christian Church of God is having at the moment. And it is called Light of the City. So, today, what's today's date? 24th of July, RCCG, Redeemed Christian Church of God, is lighting up the city of Glasgow. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's put the hands together for the Lord. It's a world how to reach evangelism of the, the, the general oversight of the mission. And it's been going around the cities of the world to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And there is a target, X million number of souls to be won to the Lord. And we give him glory and praise to the Lord that God has been faithful to his word. Millions have been won to Christ. Glasgow will not be an exception in the mighty name of Jesus. So Glasgow is a point of contact to Scotland. And right now, as we are maybe here, and there is a powerful crusade going on in Glasgow. And that explains why Pastor is not here. And Pastor will have given us advance notice, but the decision was made this morning. So that's why you didn't hear, or you were not aware, that he's not going to be in church today. The decision was made this morning to join the ministers, the pastors in Glasgow, and that's why he left this morning after the workers' meeting. He was still with us while we started the workers' meeting. It was just after the workers' meeting that he left. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, that being said, let's come to the business of the day. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of us were part of the Bible study on Thursday? How many of us were part of the Bible study on Thursday? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So I've got just three people. Fantastic. Okay, that's a discussion for another day. But maybe, trust me, God wants you to hear what we heard on Thursday. We're only going to do a quick review of what we did on Thursday and then we we'll continue. On Thursday, we looked at Hebrews and the focal point of our discussion on Thursday was that there were men in the Bible that the Bible gave testimony about. These men did extraordinary things. They stopped the amount of the lion. They were old and barren at the old age, but they became the father and mother of nations. They parted the Red Sea. They did extraordinary who were cast into the lake of fire, and the fire did not burn them. The men and women who did these great things, the Bible called them men like you and I. The Bible talks about the prophet. He said he prayed so that the rain, the heaven will cease, and the heaven will he said he was a man of like passion like you and I. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And we discovered that this current season, there are a lot of people who are going through situations and they feel that they want to call it fruit. They feel that the challenge of life is too hard on them. And they feel that this Christian thing is not working anymore. There are people who are losing out on faith quickly. To the point that they want to turn around, they want to throw in the towel. And that's why we're making a reference point to Hebrews chapter 11. But before we look at Hebrews chapter 11, we first look at Hebrews 10, verse 35 to 36, where Apostle Paul, the writer of this scripture, was talking to the Hebrew people and says, Look, do not cast away your confidence. Do 
not cast away that which the Lord has given to you because it has great potential for you to take delivery of what God has planned for you. So on Thursday, we look at that. And we look at Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, to see what faith means. And we say, can you give me Hebrews 11, verse 1? It says, faith is the evidence of things not seen and the substance of things hoped for. Praise the Lord. Another version says it's a conviction of things not seen. Sorry. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not, not seen. It's the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And we said for faith to have efficacy, for faith to be able to deliver results, that faith must have a substance behind it. Must have a substance behind it. Now, the substance of faith is the real catalyst for faith doing great things. In other words, the faith that you need to do exploit is not tied to the amount quantity of faith. It is tied to the substance behind the faith. I may have a lot of faith in an insignificant thing, but it will achieve not too much results. But I may have little faith in things that have substance and it will achieve a lot. That's why the Bible says, Jesus Christ said, even if your faith is as little as a monster seed, you can say to this mountain, be be thou moved, and it shall move. So the faith that does great things, the faith that do extraordinary exploits, does not necessarily need to be a lot of faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, that faith was that substance in it. The Bible says, faith coming by hearing, and hearing by the word, the word of, of God. God. And if I may ask you, who is the word of God? Jesus. So the substance in your faith, the substance in my faith, that makes my faith to be able to do extraordinary things, is Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we saw that it is important for us to know in what our faith relies on. And that substance is also dependent on the credibility of the one who is calling for the value. If I promise you today, and I said I will give you one million pounds, the likelihood that you will not believe me is very high. And you know the reason? Because you don't think I have the capacity to do that. I don't have one million pounds. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so if I promise someone that I will give you one million pounds, you look at me and you just laugh. Why? That is an expression of unbelief, which is the opposite of faith. Now, the reason for your laughter is because you do not have faith, either in my capacity to give you one million or my willingness to give you. Because if I have, I may not be able to party with it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. However, we serve a God that has the capacity and the willingness to do what He has promised. So there's no reason for us not to have confidence in him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, let's move on to the scripture as we move quickly. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Verse 2. Verse 2. And for by it the elders obtain a good testimony. Another version says, For by it the elders obtain good reports. Another version says, For by it the elders were vindicated and confirmed by God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They have a testimony for by faith. Now, quickly, the object, the, the, the main focus of our lesson today is to see a few 
example of this elders. Now, when Apostle Paul was writing this scripture, he was trying to motivate the new believers, Christians, Joseph and myself inclusive, to know that there is power in faith and the men of old obtained good reports by faith. And to encourage us to walk in the same line where these men have walked and see whether we will not achieve the same results. So he said, well, by it, they obtain good reports. Verse 3. Verse 3. This is where we stopped on Friday, on Thursday. But it was more detailed. Unfortunately, we can't go through all that today. He said, by faith, we understand that the words were formed, were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made out of the things which are seen. And I remember when Pastor Mrs. was closing the session, he said, the world system is C and church. Do I have the witness? The world system is for C and believe. But the kingdom system is what? Believe and see. The Bible says, for by faith we understand that the world's words, not words. Now, when I look at this, I marveled. This scripture was written over 2,000 years ago. And I remember that going up in secondary school, the level of science in the 80s was that all that exists that we know is the solar system. The nine planets, the sun, and the moon. Science did not have the knowledge that the world is more, is bigger than that, even in the 80s. Mm. Now, you know, also according to the scripture, the Bible says that at the end time, knowledge will increase. Yes. Knowledge will increase. And now science know that there is a Milky Way. Science know that the entire galaxy that we belong into, that has billions of stars, moons and sun, is actually a small fragment of the what they now call the multiverse. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Science know now that the world is beyond what we can see. Almost on a regular basis, new stars are discovered, new planets are discovered. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But here is Apostle Paul writing over 2,000 years ago. The worlds were framed by the word of God. And now, he took us back into Genesis chapter 1. And God says, let there be. There was nothing. The Bible says in the beginning, the world was without form. And the Spirit of the Lord over on the surface of the earth. Then God says, let us make this. And the Bible says, God says, let there be. And there is. And that's the principle and the strategy of the kingdom. And that's how God brings things into existence. It is an invincible God that creates the visible world out of invincible things. So what is the situation that you are facing? And you think that there is nothing around you that looks like the raw material which God will use to bring about the result that you want. God doesn't work the way men work. God brings the visible things of this world from the invisible things. If he brings a child out from a woman who was well past monopause, and was lost all hope of having a child. God parted the Red Sea not by draining the, the, the canal. Hallelujah. Amen. I, mean, I, love, I, love, I love National Geoid, and I see and I really appreciate what science can do. You know, science can drain they, by, by some, some equipment, they can drain out the whole canal, clean it up, and bring back the water into it. But nobody can drain out the whole sea. The Lord drained out the whole sea without any equipment, without any technology. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the God we are talking about. And He operates on the basis that we are looking at at this moment. The concept of faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, the things beyond our five senses, the things that we cannot comprehend, we cannot see, we cannot relate with because they appear not to exist. I was listening to a man of God preach yesterday. And 
I said something that really unraveled my husband's belief. He says, when we pray to God, we don't pray to God to tie his hand to do things. Prayer is a connection to God to release what he has already provided. Praise the Lord. It's the connection and the permission to God. God is not making anything new. And the one thing that he says that also shocked me is that you do not pray to God to do what he is not willing to do. Or what he has not planned to do. In other words, God has made provision abound. Everything that we can ever need. All we needed to do is to connect with him via prayer and then he will release it unto us. So faith brings those things that are in the storehouse that God has created and stored up via prayer. Because if you do not have faith in God, can you pray to that God? If you pray to that God, you are just wasting time. So for a child of God, when we connect to God through prayer, He then releases what He has made for us in the heavenly realm, and it becomes physical here on earth. And can I tell you, when we walk on faith, our human strength is not a critical factor in achieving the results that we want to achieve. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now let's go on to Hebrews chapter three, chapter eleven, verse four. Eleven, verse four. We see the first one in 11 verse 4. It says, By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was what? Right. Righteous. And God testifying of his gift, and through it, he being dead, still do what? Speaks. Speaks. Yeah. And the scripture made us to understand that the only blood that was spilled. That speak of a better continent covenant than the blood of Israel is the blood of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. So you can see how highly ranked the blood of Abel is. And the qualification for Abel is because it was what? He obtained by faith. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, we were having Bible study in the house and we asked ourselves a question. Really? You know, sometimes it's good for you to probe into what the Bible says and get knowledge. Now, in Genesis chapter 3, chapter 4, I think this is chapter 4, the story of Cain and Abel. The Bible says these two young men, they brought their approaches to God. Cain, by the way, Cain and Abel are siblings. So, Abel, Cain brought the fruit of the, he was a farmer. So he brought the fruit of his farm. There is no content in the scripture that says the quality of Cain's offering wasn't top notch, no. So I want to believe that Cain brought the best of his produce and he offered unto God. Abel brought the best of his produce, a cattle, a sheep, and he offered unto God. But the Bible says that Cain's offering was displeasing to God. But Abel's offering was acceptable. And that's why Apostle Paul was making reference to him. He said, by faith, he offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. So I asked myself, what is the difference? What is the difference? Then I looked back a little bit into Genesis. And I saw something that I considered personally we have made the difference. In Genesis chapter 3, when Abraham, Adam and Eve, their parents, Cain and Abel's parents, when they disobeyed God and they suddenly discovered that they were naked, the Bible says that they soon feel glee. Genesis chapter 3, verse 7. They soon feel glee to cover themselves. When we sin, we become exposed. So they sin and they suddenly realize their vulnerability and they cover themselves. They say, both eyes of them were open. And they knew that they were naked, and they did what they still fig leaves together and make themselves a covering. Now, 3 7, 3 times 7, 21. Genesis chapter 3, 21. Genesis chapter 3, 21. You will see something that happened here that I think made a difference. 
What can what what can we really get this about the two say that? The longest by record, the longest living human being. He lived over 900 years. But that's all I was reading about him as well. And the two say that was, and he gave birth to children, and then he died. But here is Enoch, his, his father. The Bible says that Enoch lived with God, walked with God 300 years after he began Methuselah. Now that tells me a lot of things. For someone to walk with God consistently for 300 years, walking with God means that your step by step every day is in agreement with God. It means that you bring God, you factor God into everything that you do. But this man did not only do it for two weeks. He did not only do it for three months. He did not only do it for 30 years. He did it for 300 years. Remember on Thursday, for those who were there, we said faith is a lifestyle. It is not an event or an occasion that you visit occasionally. You know many of us, when we need to get something from God, we prime ourselves and we build our faith. And then we go into fasting, we do all the things that we want to do. And once we take delivery of that, what do we do? We draw back. And that's what the Bible says. Hey, they so draw back, they do not belong to you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So to walk with God and to be able to operate with faith, we need consistency and determination. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Consistency in our walk with God. And the reason why I think this is critical is because how close you are to God, the easier you hear Him. I'll make an illustration. Now, I walk a little bit far from home, and I've even walked in some further location before. I love KFM because of the news that they give. On, on the morning when you're going to walk, they, 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 um, the rush period. So, that time, I, I've changed now. Because I discovered there is Premier FM, which is a Christian uh, radio station. Now, when I'm going to work and I listen to Tay FM, by the time I get onto, that's M9, isn't it? The one that goes to Pets. M9. Hello, who travels to Pets? Okay, whatever road it is, the road that leads to Pets. Hallelujah. Once I eat halfway into that road, my signal from KFM starts clicking. And I can't hear it as much as I do when I'm in, 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 in a dungeon. And the further I travel on that journey, the less I hear. The same thing with every believer and every child of God. The further we walk away from God, the less of Him we hear. The less instruction we hear. For us to be able to receive from God. Remember, we said God has made provision for everything. And what we do is to tap into that resources by faith through prayers. And then God releases what He has provided for us. We to know what God wants us to do per second, by that time. And the higher the risk and the probability of error. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Enoch walked with God for 300 years, and God gave an account of him. That this is a man that pleased me. Now, for God to show us how important that is, God prevented Enoch from seeing them. The Bible says that God took him because what? He was not. And before that, he was commended as one who pleased God. One who pleased God. A lot of us have reasons why it's difficult for us to continue in faith. Oh, it's not like that. Oh, in those days there are less distraction. Now there is sin everywhere. Now there is no situation that is adverse. Now things are more difficult. You need to bend back to be able to make ends meet. You need to do this, you need to do that. You need to forget the gathering of God's children to make money. But the Bible is talking about a man that pleased God. A man who is consistent in his fellowship with God. Walking with God is fellowshipping with God. A man who did not allow, during the days of Enoch, there were evil men on the surface of the earth. Because the generation that came after the generation of Enoch was the generation of Noah. And you know what happened to that generation? They were wiped out because there 
was a multitude of sins. So there were idolaters, there were people who did all the wrong things, all the terrible things that we hear now, they didn't just start today. Mm -hmm. They've always been around. They may have been magnified in terms of the quantity and the amount of time we hear them now, but they've always been around. But here is the man that in the midst of that terrible generation, the dark age that was consistent in his work with God. I'm challenging you, I'm challenging me today. And that situation that we face, the evolution of man, the culture that is prevailing at this moment, should not take our faith from us. Amen. Should not deny or should not draw away the strength of faith from us. Amen. Because we saw that in that Hebrew, the Bible says that without faith, no man can do what? Please, please God. <laughs> no man can please God. I think that's the verse 6. No man can please God without faith. So, like we said on Thursday, yes, faith gives us the ability to receive things from God. But more importantly, faith helps us to please God. And if we are not pleasing God, that's six, thank you. For, but without faith, it is what? Impossible. Now, let's put it together, church. But without faith, it is impossible. Let's go, one, two, three, go. But without faith, it is impossible. So please, it. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is the reward of all them that he will just Now let me say something on this and then we'll close. Without faith it's impossible to please God. And we know that for us to reign with Christ, which is our ultimate goal, then we must have been, we must have been judged to have pleased God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it means that our journey of Christianity, this is a critical factor for us. Now, let us go one step forward and say, for he who comes to God must believe that he is. Now, the reason I believe the apostle made that statement is because it is impossible for us to see God physically. Only, I don't know how many of us have seen God before. You know, like Moses, you were communing with God face to face. How many? No. But we see God in, in his work. We see God in the things that he does. We see God in the answers to our prayer. Praise the Lord. Now, the Bible says, for it, for he who comes to God must believe that he exists. What is our definition of faith in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1? Chapter 11, verse 1. Who can recite that? Evidence of things not seen. Is the evidence of things not seen? Substance of things. Awful. Now, if you cannot relate that, you will find it difficult to believe that God exists. Now, when we're having a Bible study in the house, I said there are three or four categories of people. Category number one, they don't even believe that God exists at all. It is. In their own dictionary, there is nothing like God. They believe that God came through evolution. Okay? Category number two, people who believe that God exists, but they don't want to have anything to do with Him. Okay? Category number three, people who believe that God exists, they know that they have something to do with God, but yet they do not believe in his ability and provision and, and his capacity to take care of them. And there is a lot of people in that category. Category number four, people who believe that God exists and he is willing and capable of taking care of them. Is that where you belong to? Yes. That's where I belong to. I belong to, I belong to the group that believe that God exists. So he says, for oh, it is with faith that we can even come to that position. And he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So without faith, you can't do that. And that's why I believe this is very important for us to come to terms with the concept of faith. Because it's the bridge to take us from where we are into a closer relationship with God. You cannot pant after God if your conviction of his existence and his capacity is in shape, is in doubt. You cannot. You cannot. You cannot strongly desire to have a relationship with God if you do not believe that this God, which is based on faith, that this God exists and He cares for you. 
and is willing to take care of my situation. We cannot. And more importantly, you do not have the capacity to please him if you do not have faith. You may struggle, you may do everything. You want to please God. To be pleasing you, pleasing you. This is all I really want to do. To be pleasing you, pleasing you. This is all I really want to do. It goes beyond singing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It goes beyond singing to be pleasing. We must dig deep into the concept of faith so that we can take delivery of what God has for us. So that we can become one who is a champion of our situation. So that we can become one who can cry out to God in a situation where we are in their need and believe that He will show forth for us. Look at those evil children in Daniel chapter 3. The Bible says they were thrown into the lake of fire and they said to the king, King, we are not mindful to answer you on this case. Our God is able to save us. But if we will not, we will still not bow to your idol. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They were not careful because they know that God will come forth for them. And even when it looked like it was late and it was beyond redemption, the Bible says that when they were in that lake, of, when they were in that fire, breathing with sulfur, and the Bible says there was the appearance of a fourth person and the Son of God, and the fire did not kindle against them, nor did it burn them. The fire of life, the fire of situation, the fire of career, will not burn against you in the mighty name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Because the appearance of the fourth man, the appearance of the Son of God. Will always be around you in your situation in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You need to have the faith. You must believe that He is and is in one of them that you need to see. I want you to bow down your heads this morning and speak to God. Lord, I need your help. In the Bible, the man says, God, he said, Lord, help my unbelief. Why don't you speak to I God this morning? Help my unbelief. Every form of unbelief is an anti faith. Lord, end my own belief. Let my faith come up in the name of Jesus. Lord, let my faith come up in the name of Jesus. Lord, let my faith come up in the name of Jesus. Everything that is unbelief that can become a water to question the fire of faith in my life. Father, Lord, take them away in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, help my own belief. Go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. Help my own belief, Lord. Help my own belief in the name of Jesus. Help my own belief. In the name of Jesus. Lord, help my own belief. Lord, help my own belief in the name of Jesus. Lord, let my faith increase in the name of Jesus. Let my faith be well up in the name of Jesus. Not only for me to develop the capacity to receive from you, but for me to be able to please you because I know that this is a critical thing. My ability to please you in every situation, in my career, in my family life, in my marital life, in my singleness to be able to please you, in my family to be able to please you, in everything that I do to be able to please you, so that you can commend and give a testimony concerning me that I am pleasing to you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you even this morning. We've learned so God Lord from the men of old, people who have walked the walk of faith and have become triumphant. Lord, we ask for God, Lord, this morning that everything that you have spoken to our hearts will be a good seed on a good soil in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We pray, Lord, that you will bring forth fruit for repentance, fruit for progress in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we pray, oh God, Lord, that when situation of life and circumstance of life demand this from us, Lord, the Holy Spirit will bring it up even in us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And we will live upon those situations in the name of Jesus. Lord, I decree upon everyone here and myself, Lord, the grace for an increased level of faith in the name of Jesus. The grace for an increased level of faith in the name of Jesus. For us to be able to walk in the level that you want us to walk in the name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father. Blessed be your holy name. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we just stretch our hands?
Yes, I'm going to focus on this. Thank you for your time. I have just two minutes now. Thank you for giving me my ability to speak your word with other Lord. Not only is he used by you in the name of Jesus. The virtue that has come out of him, Lord, has come out of him. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. As we pray, so shall we believe in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, this is the hour for offering. Uh, please, if you have your offering in cash, do make a way to my left here and put your offering in the offering box. Box. Okay. Else, please, uh, the online giving is there. Feel free to uh, do what is needed. Okay, let me add offering and tithe. I know Pastor will always say that he's careful, but please, your offering and your tithe. And as you do so, God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's pray for the offering. Father, we thank you this day. We worship your awesome name. Lord, your word says, give, and it shall be given unto us, good measures, pressed down, shaken together, running over, when men give unto us. If men can give unto us in such measure, you can give way more than that. As we come with our substance, O oh God, we ask that your blessings will fill us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, O King of glory. We ask that this offering we shall give this day, the time we shall pay, Lord shall Chat pass for us in the mighty name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Thank you for answering prayers. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. It's time for our announcements. Yes, uh, as usual, we are all aware, every Tuesday, our children meet by 6 p.m. in via Zoom. We encourage all parents to please keep it, keep this date in the children's department. Keep the date to them. 6 p.m. on Tuesday, we meet. Uh, Bible study is on Thursday, 6 p.m. We all are aware of the agenda that was taken time on that, and it was not a Report. So please, this Thursday, let's make the date and be there by 6 p.m. It's also on Zoom. It's also on Zoom. Just give in and give in the rest. On Sundays, we start our worship here by 9 a.m. with the workers' meeting. It's online. All workers are always, always lovely. And we come physically to worship in God's presence by 11 a.m. God bless you as you come. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, I also want to mention that. Um, from the children are having a holiday camp coming up on the 27th of July. 27th of July, the 30th of July. Please register your kids if it's not also 27th, 30th of July. And it's going to start by 10 a.m. 10 a.m. on Wednesday. 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Do we have any first timers in the house? If you want to see results for the first time, please let's welcome the children. As you come in any first timer, please just show by way of hand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.
Thank you. 